You've definitely seen them. Those massive trucks with spinning barrels cruising through city streets, heading to construction sites at all hours. But here's the question, why do they spin? Let's clear something up right away. That truck you're looking at? It's often called a cement truck, but that's technically incorrect. What it's really carrying is concrete, a mix of cement, water, sand, and gravel. Cement is just one ingredient. It's the glue. The rest gives it strength, structure, and volume. Inside that spinning drum is a carefully measured recipe. Cement, the powdery binder, sand and gravel, the filler materials known as aggregate, water, which triggers the chemical reaction. The mixture starts to set, or harden, the moment water is added. That's why it's crucial the drum spins constantly. The motion keeps the mix active, preventing the particles from separating and the mixture from turning into an immovable rock. Without movement, the concrete begins curing, and once it sets inside the drum, it's nearly impossible to remove without serious tools or serious damage. So what does spinning really do? Inside the drum are helical fins, metal blades that spiral along the inside wall. When the drum spins forward, these blades lift and fold the concrete over itself, constantly churning and remixing the contents. This prevents segregation, where gravel sinks to the bottom and cement-rich liquid rises to the top. And here's the cool part. When the truck is ready to pour, the driver flips a switch and the drum spins in reverse. The same blades now push the mixture backward, toward the discharge chute, kind of like reversing a screw. The rotation speed is also critical. At high speeds, it helps fully mix the batch. At low speeds, it keeps it from setting without adding too much air or friction. Most trucks rotate between 4 and 12 RPM, depending on the load, ambient temperature and driving conditions. In hot weather, they might increase RPMs to prevent flash setting. In cold climates, they might reduce speed to avoid overmixing. Some mixers even include temperature sensors and onboard computers that auto-adjust drum rotations to match the ideal setting time. Let's talk variety. Concrete work isn't one size fits all. So there are several specialized truck types, each with its own role on the job site. One, standard drum mixer. This is your everyday concrete truck with the spinning drum. It collects ready mix concrete from a batching plant and delivers it within a limited time window. Two, volumetric mixer truck. Instead of pre-mixed concrete, these trucks carry separate compartments for cement, aggregate, and water, mixing them on site in custom ratios perfect for small or remote jobs where flexibility is key. Three, concrete pump truck. These don't carry concrete. Instead, they pump it using a powerful hydraulic system. A concrete mixer feeds the pump and a massive articulating boom delivers the mix to precise spots, rooftops, basements, or over fences. Four, mini mix trucks. Smaller versions of standard mixers used for jobs in tight areas like urban neighborhoods or residential sites. Five, agitator trucks. These carry concrete from remote batch plants over longer distances. Their drums often have enhanced insulation or vibration settings to maintain consistency. Each of these trucks plays a unique role. Often on large sites, you'll see a whole fleet working in harmony. Mixers feeding pumps, pumps reaching hard-to-access zones, and volumetric trucks on standby for last-minute adjustments. The spinning drum isn't magic. It's a well-engineered mechanical system. Here's what keeps it going. The drum is mounted at an angle on heavy-duty rollers. A hydraulic motor, powered either by the truck's engine or an auxiliary PTO, power takeoff, rotates the drum. Controls inside the cab allow the driver to adjust speed, direction, and chute position. Modern mixer trucks come equipped with load cells to measure concrete volume, slump sensors to detect consistency, GPS tracking and onboard diagnostics. 
The driver can monitor and control the drum using a dashboard panel or even a remote control from outside the cab. And when it's time to pour, a chute system directs the mix into forms, molds, or pump hoppers. In tight spots, workers can attach flexible hoses for precision delivery. This mechanical choreography ensures that what starts as a slurry of stone and powder ends up as part of a foundation, floor, or column, perfectly mixed and perfectly placed. So what if something goes wrong? What if the drum stops spinning? Well, that's where things get ugly. Concrete begins to cure within 30 to 90 minutes, depending on conditions. If the drum stops moving, the consequences can be disastrous. The mix hardens unevenly, causing blockages. The drum becomes a 20-ton solid rock. The truck can't dump or discharge. It's stuck. Crews might need to jackhammer the load out manually. In extreme cases, companies have to cut open the drum with a torch, remove the concrete, and replace the entire unit costing up to $50,000 or more. That's why many companies build in safety systems. Automatic idle spin to keep rotation active when parked. Backup motors in case the PTO fails. Emergency dump features that release the mix before it sets. Spinning isn't optional, it's mission critical. Without these spinning giants, our world wouldn't look the same. From highways to hospitals, apartment towers to stadiums, concrete is everywhere, and getting that concrete from plant to pore site is a race against time and chemistry. The spinning drum is what makes that race possible, and the teamwork between different truck types, mixer, pump, volumetric, mini, allows massive pores to be completed safely, precisely, and efficiently. Next time you see a spinning barrel roll by, remember, inside is a recipe in motion, a formula of science. So there you have it, the real reason cement pump trucks spin and why that rotation is far more than just a visual. From the physics of helical blades to the urgency of curing time, every spin matters. If you learned something today, give us a like, subscribe for more engineering deep dives, and drop a comment. What's the most surprising thing you discovered about concrete trucks? And if you've ever driven one, we'd love to hear your story.